Welcome to the mother relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. A revealing tweet from none other than Javante Davis, who's supposed to be headlining his own pay-per-view this weekend. In his own words, he said, The promotion for this event has been ass. Now watch, I don't show up to the arrivals and shit today. Seems that he stood on business. According to veteran boxing scribe, Marcos Villegas, Javante no-showed his grand arrival at the MGM. Is he right? Has the promotion for this fight been lackluster? Because if it has, then it goes against the narrative we heard late last year about the PBC pairing up with Amazon and how Amazon is so much bigger and so much better than DAZN, for example, or ESPN, that given that Amazon has over 200 million subscribers or something like that, they can reach more people. Then what's he complaining about? What I told you, what I told you late last year, that just because you paired up with Amazon, that doesn't mean it's the same situation that you had with Fox or the same situation that you had with Showtime because those broadcasters made a long-term commitment to you, whereas Amazon, they haven't. It's not the same deal structure. They're just distributing the pay-per-view. It's a place for you to buy it. But that's all it is. They don't have the stake in how the pay-per-view performs or your banner's success that Fox had or that Showtime had. Don't get lost. Don't get confused. The reason the promotional push is not as strong on Amazon as it might have been on other broadcasters is because Amazon ain't that invested and I told you they weren't. You don't think it's because he left Mayweather Promotions and because Mayweather Promotions isn't promoting him anymore? You don't think it's because of that? No, because Mayweather Promotions doesn't broker deals with networks, oh. broadcasters like Fox or Showtime or in this instance Amazon. No, what you were seeing was Mayweather Promotions fighters fighting on PBC shows. It's the PBC that brokers the deal. Right. And based on the network deal, the PBC reaches with a broadcaster. That's what keeps the lights on. That's what keeps the fighters fighting. And that's what pays for the promotion. In this instance, the lack thereof. Javante Davis thought so little of it, he didn't even bother to show up. The grand arrivals, I'd say that's more for the fans. The paying customers, the paying public, really. Calvin Ford tried to get ahead of this thing. He tried to get in front of it by claiming that Gervonta Davis was held up. Well, after Gervonta said what he said, he said he got delayed and he'll make it up to the fans on Saturday night. Whatever. None of the pay-per-views that the PBC have done on Amazon so far have gotten much of a promotional push. Whether you're talking about Tim Zoo's or Canelo Alvarez's, Canelo's pay-per-view got more advertisement, more airtime in the buildup of the fight on the zone than it did on Amazon. On Amazon, I didn't start seeing advertisements and banners for that thing until the week of the fight, the week of the fight. But all in the buildup, you didn't see nothing. And you didn't see much on their social media either. Why not? It's not much of an investment to them if it's even an investment. They're not invested. Nope. I caught wind of a rumor earlier today that they're planning on doing a show sometime in August. I don't know if it's a pay-per-view or a free fight, a fight they're giving away. But the rumor seems to indicate that they're cutting back on production costs. Oh. Something to do with what cameras they're using for the live action feed. The Jitta and the Jib and the Robocam. They cut them. If the rumor checks out and they're cutting back on production costs, they're just doing the bare minimum, it accents what I've been telling you all along, that Amazon's not making a commitment to them. That's the first thing. The second thing is, without a commitment, they can only do but so much. Who's paying for this programming? Who's putting the money up to pay for the production staff and the fighters, their purses, just everything that goes into doing a show? That if you're not getting a real commitment from Amazon, and they're not giving you an annual budget to do shows on their platform, who is? Whose money are you using? And are you getting anything back? What? You do a show, you do a pay-per-view, you put your money up to make the show happen in the hopes that the pay-per-view will bring in revenue that gets you your money back. You get back what you put in. Are they getting back what they put in in the, the Tim Zhu fight? Will they this weekend? I remember late last year, the story was they were supposed to do 12 to 14 shows. 12 to 14 this calendar year. Right. Eight months into it, if they're lucky. They will have only done four, eight months into the year. Four shows in eight months. Wow. So for the people that gave me a hard time when I said that might not happen, that Amazon's commitment to the PBC is not akin to what Showtime's commitment was, for all those guys that are out there, lurking, do you feel stupid yet? 
I mean, this time it's not coming from me. It's not coming from Ring IQ, the content creator. It's coming from Javante Davis himself. When Javante says that the promotion has been lackluster, who's responsible for that? Do you feel stupid yet? Or are you so stupid you can't admit you're stupid, you can't admit you're wrong, and all it does is make you angry? Moron. I gave you guys the skinny months ago. You didn't want to listen. I gave you the lay of the land and what you could expect. What, you mad that I was right? Then these last couple of months must have been terrible for you. All of last year and all of this one. Get used to it, because there's more where that came from. Elsewhere in the world of boxing, a major undertaking, Boxing Saudi Wealth Fund, holds talks to create a boxing league, sources say. London, Riyadh, June 11th, Routers. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, the PIF, is in discussions with multiple boxing stakeholders to create a league, potentially reshaping the competitive landscape of the sport. People familiar with the matter told Routers, PIF is looking to invest in a joint venture with some of the sport's stakeholders that would feature more boxing bouts. The people said, speaking on the condition of anonymity, a handful of leading promoters, including Matchroom Boxing and Golden Boy, are involved in the discussions that could result in a deal valuing the new entity between four to five billion. One of the people said, PIF wants to create a venture that would bring the sport's main organizers together in which it would take a minority stake, the person added. Turkey Al Sheikh, a close advisor to the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, who has been heavily involved in the sports sector and is chairman of the Saudi General Entertainment Authority, was overseeing the final discussions around a potential deal about a month ago, a second person added. Routers could not establish the details around how a league would be structured. PIF and Matchroom Boxing declined to comment, and Golden Boy Promotions did not respond to requests for comment. What could this look like? Something akin to the tournament that we just saw between Matchroom and Queensbury. Like that. If you're talking about league boxing, team boxing essentially, the members of the team would be the fighters that fight under a promotional banner, a particular promotional banner. Right. What I imagine is those would be the players. So you got the Matchroom Boys, the Queensbury Boys, Golden Boy. Each promotional outfit is a team unto itself. All of the fighters, they are the players. The Eddie Hearns and Frank Warrens and Oscar De La Hoya's is, those are the GMs. At least I think that's how they would structure this. Currently, the sport is made up of boxing organizations, including the World Boxing Council, the International Boxing Federation, the World Boxing Association, and the World Boxing Organization, which each have their own rules for championship belts. Saudi Arabia has poured billions of dollars into sport as it seeks to wean the kingdom off of oil dependency under de facto ruler Crown Prince Mohammed's Vision 2030 program, which aims to bring in tourism, boost the private sector, and create jobs. This might. If you make Saudi Arabia the entertainment capital of the world and the site of the biggest fights, the biggest boxing matches, it becomes the new Las Vegas. What's the catch 22? Boxing is the latest sport to attract possible investment from the PIF, which is chaired by the Crown Prince after deals across golf, Formula One, and football. The fund has also been considering an investment in a new cycling league, Routers has reported. The PIF shook up the world of golf by funding the LIV Golf Series in a move that created a rivalry with the PGA Tour and led to a shock deal to merge the tours that was announced last year. What's the caveat in all of this? What's the drawback? Because there always is one. In passing, if you're imagining a world where big time boxing and the biggest boxing matches are happening in that region of the world most of the time, that means they're not happening in America. That means they're not happening in the United Kingdom, those boxing markets. If the goal is to make this the new mecca of boxing, it would be to the detriment of those domestic markets. Or it could be in a situation where you are developing a league and financing the majority of the major bouts, the big ones, and bringing them to that region of the world that would come at the expense of big time fights not happening in the UK, not happening in America. The question, were they? We know that the UK has had a renaissance in recent years, but America, in America, big time boxing has been dwindling over the years. There are a number of contributing factors. But the market for the sport is smaller now than it ever was. Now, critics of Saudi, Mohammed bin Salman, accused the country of using its sovereign wealth fund to engage in quote unquote 
sports washing in the face of heavy criticism of Saudi Arabia's human rights record. If sports washing is going to increase my GDP by way of 1%, then I will continue doing sports washing, the crown prince told Fox News last year. My thoughts on Saudi Arabia using sports washing to change the nation's image? Let's be honest here. You could levy any number of criticisms against any country on the map including this one, including the United States or the United Kingdom. You're the villain in somebody's story. That's the way it is. So before you get on your moral high horse and try to wag your finger in their face over what you claim they're doing wrong, understand nobody's hands are clean. Leave the politics to the politicians. Because where you might have something to say about them and how they do things, they might have something to say about you and how you do things. Just keep it boxing. So this vision seems to involve making Saudi the boxing capital of the world. I can already imagine that some people aren't going to like that. That doesn't eliminate the need for a domestic boxing scene, but what that does mean is that the big time fights, the really big ones, they would go over there. The smaller ones would still happen over here. So when a fighter is promoted to the level that he gets to where in Anthony Joshua is, for example, well, that might be the kind of fighter that you send out to Saudi for the big fights and the big nights. But it wasn't always that way and he wasn't always there. You have to build that brand and that brand is built on a grassroots following. The domestic boxing scene got him to where he is. So you will still need them to get other fighters to that same place. While a matchroom may have the contract for the likes of an Anthony Joshua or a Dimitri Bivol, they're all star fighters. Those fighters aren't gonna fight forever. The acquisition of new talent and developing new fighters is still required for what is a long-term vision. And a part of that long-term vision has to be the domestic scene. It has to be. You think about a situation where all the financing for this endeavor is coming from the Saudis. The value of the promoters is the contracts that they hold for those particular fighters. As well as their broadcast partners that distribute their shows. The money would be coming from the Saudis. The money would be, but not the talent, and not the ability to identify it. You following? If you get the sense that this is somehow an acquiescence of power, or that the Saudis wish to monopolize the entirety of boxing as a sport, if you have a sneaking suspicion... You don't like it. Understand that even if the majority of the big fights, the really, really big ones happen in Saudi, there's always gonna be a need for that domestic boxing scene and developing a grassroots following because that's how you get those fighters to that place to where they are big names. Got it? What that means is that this could work. Theoretically, it could. May come at the expense of the really big fights happening outside of America in some other region of the world, though at the same time, the American boxing scene wasn't doing a good enough job of delivering those big fights on a deadline. That's how we got here. And the Brits? They've always had a great domestic boxing scene. They still do. And fighting for area titles will still attract a crowd in that region of the world. Even if the biggest of the big fights get outsourced to Saudi. In the UK, it doesn't have to be a title fight to draw a crowd. In the UK, it doesn't have to be the biggest of the big fights to put asses in the seats. So they're gonna be all right. What are you saying? Fights like Lopez versus Steve Claggett aren't the kind of fights that the Saudis have been putting on. They've been putting on the fights that are difficult to make, making things happen that would not otherwise happen without their involvement. So if you want more of that, this is good news. I feel like I'm the only one who will tell the truth and who addresses it. Anybody else who's asked questions, they're just shit scared of losing their media accreditation so they won't get invited. So you ask the likes of the gad, Gareth A. Davis, what the atmosphere's like, and he'll say, oh yeah, it's all right, it's fine, I love it out here. Of course you do. You're on the payroll. And even Jim White, I love Jim White, but he was asked about the atmosphere. He's like, oh yeah, the atmosphere is fantastic. I don't see the problem. Turkey Al Sheikh was on the channel the other day, inviting him out there. And he was like, oh yes, yes, your excellency. It'd be, it'd be an honor to come out there and watch the fight. What's that? Oh, business class flight. Oh, go on then. Champagne on arrival, if I have to. So what I'm saying is, they feel obliged to be complimentary about the atmosphere because they're on the payroll. But I'm not on the payroll, so I'm not worried. I can just be honest. It's all about frosh on fighting, telling the truth. And, and my honesty, and the fact that I'm not geared towards a certain agenda, and I'm not trying to please anybody, means that my honesty upsets certain people. And that's why Bricktop gets so annoyed. I've told you, Bricktop, 
Get on the channel. Let's have a face-to-face, not over the phone, not over a Zoom call. Let's get face-to-face. Let's have a good, old-fashioned, passionate, amicable debate. So as Saudi investment becomes more prominent in the sport of boxing, you're sure to hear more criticisms, just like those you just heard from veteran fighter and Hall of Fame inductee Farrell Crotch, who's complaining about the atmosphere of these fights that land. It's not electric enough. The crowd, they're not rowdy enough, not drunk enough. I actually understand where he's coming from. I do. That If the fight is happening in the UK, for example, involving UK fighters, it is that much more electric. It is. But the fact of the matter is that the fights that Saudi is delivering are fights that would not otherwise have happened if they didn't get involved. Fury wasn't going to fight Usyk if not for the money they put up. Matchroom would have never fought Queensbury as a tournament, as an entire show. We wouldn't have got that. And you wouldn't have an atmosphere to criticize because there'd be no fight, no show, for you to criticize its atmosphere. Nothing. The fight between Artur Betterbeef and Dimitri Bivol set to go down later on this year. We weren't going to get that. You understand that, right? Right. That both sides would have never came to an agreement. It's the Saudis bridging that gap with their financing that even makes that fight possible. So don't worry about the atmosphere. Be thankful that you're getting the fight right. because you wouldn't have got that at all if not for them. Bottom line. Farrell Crotch quips that he can be completely honest about the situation because he's not on the payroll like some others. Here's another way to look at it. Because you're not on the payroll, you can afford to be disingenuous. What? If Farrell Crotch were still an active fighter here today and he was offered the kind of money the Saudis are offering other fighters in the sport here today. You think he wouldn't take it? You think he'd stand on principle? Don't be naive. It's a double-edged sword. You say you can be honest because you're not on the payroll. I say because you're not on the payroll. Of course you complain. Stand on your soapbox and hop about how the atmosphere ain't the same in Saudi as it is in the UK when the fights you're watching in Saudi wouldn't have happened. In the UK? In America? You think you were gonna get Wilder in the ring with a guy like Zhang? That wouldn't have happened without the Saudis' money, and the same applies to the Joseph Parker fight, because the Joseph Parker fight was briefly talked about years ago, but it never happened. It's the Saudis' money that made it happen. That's reality. When they were both champions, and when they were both unbeaten years ago, the fight between them didn't materialize, it didn't happen. It's the big money that drew Wilder out and put him in the ring with those fighters, and the same applies to a lot of other situations involving a lot of other fighters. The reason fights don't happen is usually the money disputes over the money who gets how much of it does it even exist is a fight commercially viable a lot of the time this is the holdup and the saudis have been eliminating that problem so while you may feel like they're monopolizing the sport or they're outsourcing all the big fights to that region of the world a good number of those fights wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for them so stop being a wet blanket boxing fans if there ain't nothing to complain about they'll find something to complain about